Hi, I'm Kenny Joya. Welcome to another one of my tutorials. In this video, I'm going to show you stretch marker transient guides in Reaper. Now, the transient guides are very useful when you want to work with stretch markers manually, as they'll show you where the important transients or attacks are, and then you can choose to readjust them or not to affect the timing of your audio. Now, we'll start off with a review of stretch markers. I have a loop in front of me here. And it's a little bit out of time with the grid. And I want to make it a bit tighter using stretch markers. So let me play it. Now let's hear it against the metronome. You can hear it's a bit off. So let's tighten it up using stretch markers. We'll start by zooming in to our first transient right here. And we'll click at the first transient, right click, and go down here to stretch markers and choose add stretch marker at cursor. And that's gonna create one right there. Let's zoom out. So if we move this around, it's gonna stretch or time stretch everything on this side and everything on this side. Now, stretch markers are more useful to work with if we create a few more. Let's go to the next transient and add another one right here. This time we're going to right click. And instead of choosing it here, we can use the keystroke Shift W. And that also adds one. Let's add one more right over here. And this time, instead of using that keystroke, we're going to use a modifier. On the PC, it's Alt Control, and on the Mac, it's Option Command. And just hold on the modifier and click it, and that also creates a stretch marker. And now we have three, which makes it a bit easier to see how this works, as this stretch marker and this one are going to anchor as you move this around. Watch. Grab it right here, and we can shift the timing as we move it, changing with a snare actually lands. But the other stretch markers act as anchors, keeping everything on the left and on the right intact. That's the benefit of starting with three of them. So let's quantize or snap our transients to the grid. Let's turn on snapping over here, zoom in, and drag this. See here it snaps right in bar three. And do the same thing with our snare on bar three, B2, right here. And this one goes to bar three, B3. Now, notice I didn't choose this kick right here. This kick kind of swings, so I don't really want to quantize that one, as you'll see in a bit. So let's see what this sounds like. Now, we can go through and do the same thing. For each one of these, just grab it, snap it to the nearest grid to quantize it. Let's hear that back. That's a lot tighter, but as you can see, it's a little time consuming. There is a quicker way of doing this if you want to quantize every transient. So let's right click this, go to stretch markers, and let's get rid of these by removing them, and then we'll start over. This time, we're going to create them automatically. Select the item, go to view, and go to dynamic split. And using this dialog, we could split our items by transients. So we could set our transient sensitivity right here. Here's our threshold. If we bring it up, it doesn't grab every hit. These dotted lines are the transients that are going to be chosen. We could bring it down and up. 
And notice these vertical lines right here. As you bring it down, it chooses more transients. Bring it all the way down to bring in those hi hats. Let's bring it up just to get the major hits. And we can close this. Now, normally, we'd use this dialog to split our items like this. Now, we have different items for each transient. But we're going to do it differently. Let's undo that. Go back to dynamic split and choose this instead. Write stretch markers to selected items. And if we choose that, it's going to put a stretch marker on each transient. Write stretch markers. And that's what it did. So now we can either manually move them or do it automatically. Just choose it, right click. Go to stretch markers, stretch markers and selected items, and snap to grid. Now, before we actually do this, let's check out the snapping settings. So, the grid we're using over here is eighth notes. So, it's going to snap our stretch markers to the nearest eighth note. Let's choose it again. Right click, stretch markers, stretch markers and selected items, and snap to grid. And now all the markers change or stretch so that each transient is on the grid. So let's hear it. It kind of messed up over here because of that swing kick. Let's delete it. We're holding Alt on the PC or Option on the Mac. Just click it. It deletes that stretch marker. And we can see this extra kick that we're no longer quantizing or snapping to the grid. Same thing over here. But notice our beat is now locked a lot tighter with the grid. And we did this automatically. But there are times where you want to do it manually. Maybe you're fixing a vocal or a guitar or a drum performance. And you don't want to quantize every single hit. That's where transient guides come in. So let's undo all this. And now let's do this instead. Let's choose it, right click, go to stretch markers, and go down here to transient guides. And if we choose this over here, calculate transient guides, it's going to create these green markers or guides on each of our transients. Now, the transient guides are different from stretch markers. Let me show you. If we zoom in and create some stretch markers, one here, here, and here. Now, if I move this around, notice the one over here and the one over here are still being used as anchors. But notice our guides are not. They're pretty much being ignored. So let's undo that. The purpose of them is to show us where our transients are. And so we can quickly turn them into stretch markers as we need them. So if I grab this right here, this is now a stretch marker. And the same with this one, or this one. But until we grab them, they're still just transient guides. They're not stretch markers. So the way to use these is when you manually want to shift things around. So let's say, for example, we wanted to quantize just on the top of each bar. We have snapping turned on. We could grab the first one, turns it into a stretch marker, and snap it to bar three. But now we could ignore all these guides over here and just quantize the next downbeat over here. So it's not going to be as tight, but still tighter than before, as the downbeat of each bar is now quantized or snapped to the grid. Let's do the same thing with bar five, bar six, and bar seven. So now let's hear that. It's still a bit off, but by doing this manually, we have more control. For instance, let's snap our snare, but let's ignore this kick. Because like I said before, this kick kind of swings. So let's grab this one instead, put it on bar three, B3, then we could ignore this. 
Let's quantize this one as well. But we still left this one alone. So we kept intact the way the drummer played it, which is really useful when you're editing live drums. Let's say you wanted to preserve a drum fill. When the drum fill started, like right here, we could quantize the start. And let's say it ended over here. Just quantize the end. And the fill can stay closer to the performance. So we can still preserve the drummer's original feel. Or if you want to lose that feel, for this, we could switch our grid to 16th notes. We can requantize this for 16th notes, which loses the swing. Sounds a bit weird, but we have that option. And if you don't want to quantize it, just clear it, and it goes back to the way the drummer originally played it. So we're preserving the feel. So by using transient guides, we don't have to quantize everything. But it's a lot easier to, as we have these guides, to adjust. They're already there. So we can grab this and move it around by feel, or by snapping it right in the grid. Now we don't have to create the guides in the right-click menu. Let's clear this. Get rid of the guides and get rid of the stretch markers. We're back to the beginning. And we could have done it this way. Select it, go to dynamic split, and do the same thing with the transient sensitivity, find a good threshold, and then change this to add transient guide markers to items and we could generate them right from this dialog, like this. And once again, we could manually move them around or snap them to the grid. One by one, we're just choosing the important ones, like this one and this one, but leaving this one the way it was originally played. And that's pretty much it. That's the stretch marker, transient guides in Reaper. I hope you learned something, hope you can use it, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.